all these great faces and to be together and to have the opportunity to worship together and hear a good message from Pastor George. It's just so wonderful that we can be together. Amen. I just have a few announcements. Um, there's a worship committee meeting tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Um, always mask, social distance. Um, Tuesday night there is a council meeting and that is also at 7 o'clock. That will also be in person. Um, next Saturday, the 12th, uh, the, the, the council will be having a retreat um, with Pastor Peggy Marks. So um, that should be a wonderful experience as for, for the council. That should be very rewarding. Um, uh, does anyone else have any announcements? If anybody is available Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, we're going to do some painting to give some help and to need your help, if you will. Around 9.30 in the morning. Okay, anyone else? Okay, Karen, we're ready to hear from you. Thank you. Very quick an announcement just to remind everybody that we will be uh, meeting at 6 o'clock on Wednesday uh, by Zoom for our 2022 Lent study called A Way in the Wilderness. This morning being the first Sunday in Lent, uh, we will read a prayer. Um, God of our yesterdays and tomorrows, you guided our ancestors through the wilderness of freedom, a new home, and a future to come. Turn our hearts towards our neighbors who face uncertainty, insecurity, and crisis today. Inspire within us compassion for their needs, gratitude for gifts, and a holy yearning for justice, that all may experience safety, security, and hope in our world today. In your name we pray. Amen. confession and forgiveness in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen. God of all mercy and consolation come to the aid of your people 
turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that, attentive to your word, we may confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins. Now and our honor, sing his son and let honor of the Holy Spirit, spirit so that we so may be live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us stand for the hymn 803, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross.
brought them to the promised land. Guide us now so that, following your Son, we may walk safely through the wilderness of this world to where the life you alone can give. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. God's word comes to us, and Brother Middleton will lead us. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. First lesson this morning comes from the books of the law, specifically the book of Deuteronomy, the 26th chapter, beginning at the second verse. <clears throat> when you have come into the land that the Lord your God has given you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruits of the ground which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God has given you. And you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. The wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number. And there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried out to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice, saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power, and with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first fruit of the fruit of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God, and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate all the bounty that the Lord has, your God has given to you and to your house. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We will read responsibly, responsibly, Psalm 91. <laughs> you who dwell in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, you will say to the Lord, my refuge and my stronghold, my God in whom I trust my trust. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, the Most High your habitation, no evil will befall you. Nor shall the come near your dwelling. For God will give the angels charge over you to guard you in all your ways. Upon your hands and your very heart, lest you strike your foot against the stone. You will tread on the lion club, cub, and the viper. You will trample down the lion and the serpent. I will deliver those who cling to me. I will not call them because they know my name. They will call to me. I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With all life, God satisfy them and show them the God's salvation. Second reading comes from Paul's epistle to the Romans, the 10th chapter, beginning in the 8th verse. The word is near you on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart, and so is justified. And one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call upon him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Here ends the reading. Thanks. 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 
Let us stand. answered him. It is said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. It's the first Sunday in Lent. And we now begin this meaningful period of reflection and prayer as we look towards Easter and the cross. And it is usual, as we normally do on the first Sunday in Lent, we look to the temptations, or the temptation of Jesus. And I pray that as we do so, it would be meaningful for us all. Let us have a word of prayer. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us to this time. A time when our world is in chaos. A time when many are suffering. A time when some are seeking power and authority. Help us, O oh Lord our God, to recognize our place and our role in your world. May your peace come over all. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. This these temptations of Jesus can be viewed in many ways, which is good because it gives the preacher an opportunity to have a new angle every three years. <laughs> Today I would like us to see the temptations as a question of identity. If you are so-and-so, so-and-so. A question of identity. But more importantly, I would like us to see the relevance for our lives, for our identity as children of God. Luke 4 verse 3, the devil said to Jesus, if you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Note the question, 
If you're the son of God, I, I love the way it's put, you know? A dare to prove who he is. If you are the son of God, you're hungry. Well, if you're the son of God, you, you're the son of God, turn this stone into bread. Satisfy your needs. You can do it. You have the power. And Jesus answered, it is written, one does not live by bread alone. Deuteronomy 8.3. And Matthew's gospel expands the quotation or extends it, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. We all recognize this as a temptation to focus on the material side, satisfying one's material needs. And I'm fairly sure you've heard this before, but it is always good to be reminded because we live in a world where people focus on the material, food, food, clothing, shelter. They're said to be the basic needs. I am sometimes bothered, maybe not sometimes, but always bothered, when in families we have wonderful parents bringing up their children and they're focusing on the material, a good education. You want when your children grow up, they must be able to get a good job. Or if you've got a big business, teaching them the business, they must be able to take control and at the same time failing to give the same attention to the spiritual. I've been disturbed when active members of my congregation say, oh, if my son wants to come to church, that's his business. When I was a child, I was forced to come. I'm not going to force my children to come. And I say to myself, but you take your kid to school. You don't say, you know, if he wants to go to school, that's his business. There is a focus on the importance of preparing for the material world and not as much attention to the spiritual. So as we look at this temptation to Jesus to prove his identity by meeting his material need, let us recognize our need also to focus in our lives and in the lives of our families on the spiritual. One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. The next temptation was to have power and authority as opposed to faithfulness, as opposed to, to being of service, being a servant to others. Verse 5, Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority for it has been given to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. And Jesus answered, it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. If you had your Bibles, I would say, please take out your Bibles and underline, Serve only him. The desire for power, the desire for, for authority, the desire for prestige. I like a little prestige to myself, but I'm not ashamed. <laughs> you, know, you don't want to be treated like dirt, you like a little prestige. I appreciated the man who said, dress the way you want to be addressed. He said, when you walk in some place, people must not look at you and say, who are you? They must say, how are you? you know, it makes a lot of sense. But power, authority, prestige must take second place to service. 
Jesus said to his disciples, if you desire to be great, then the greatest must be the least of all. The one who would be great would be one who is of service to all. And we look with pain at what is going on in Europe. Amen? Amen. It pains our heart. I was speaking with Sister Miranda, I think. Miranda, Sister yeah. Miranda of Estonia. She, like me, we know these things. She knows what has happened in Estonia. I know what has happened in Guyana. I was telling Luis I was about 10. One day I was out with my cycle and the British government, we were a British colony, the British government was upset that our leaders seemed to be going communist and they sent a warship with soldiers. And I'm riding my bicycle and suddenly I see spread out across the road British soldiers with their rifle set and their legs spread eagle. And I spun around and I got out of there. You know, it's all over. Let's think of America. You know, who blockaded Cuba? You, you with me? Every nation seeks to protect its interests <coughs> even beyond its borders. We might say, well, we're just the ordinary people. We're just the church people. It's the government school do that sort of thing. But even in the church, the, the striving for authority, the, the striving for position, the striving for power can be present. And I'm not going to spend time telling you how I've experienced that. But I always remember a senior pastor saying to me, that people who in their daily lives lack authority and power often come into church and seek to exercise it there. Let this be a time when we are reminded that we identify as children of God, not by our position, not by our power and authority, but by our service to others. We must be going out of our way to be of service to other people. That identifies us. It identifies Jesus as Son of God. It identifies us as children of God. The third temptation was for Jesus to test God's promise of protection. Verse 9, then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. It is, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Prove it. Throw yourself down if you are the Son of God. But this was not merely a temptation to prove his identity by exploiting the promise of protection. This was a temptation that was related to the coming crucifixion the crucifixion which will come later in the ministry and in the life of Jesus. Notice at the crucifixion, the same words were used. If you are king of the Jews, save yourself. You can do it. Coming back to the temptations, Jesus answered the devil. It is said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Because he knew, he knew that if suffering was going to be part of God's way for him, then he merely, not merely, but he had to put his trust in God. There are none of us like to suffer. 
we, I, I claim the leadership and the, the cover of the Lord all the time. I experience it all the time in my life. But in the final analysis, we have to put our trust in the Lord and not expect that because we are children from God, He will protect us from every problem and every bit of suffering. I had a friend, had because he's passed on. He was diagnosed with colon cancer. And he said to me, George, the doctor says immediate surgery. I said, so you had it? He said, no. He said he asked the doctor to give him three weeks to pray. That's where he was born, three weeks to pray. I know my friend, we've been friends since we're teenagers. He's a man who, when he got married some years into his marriage, he stayed home one year from work. And his wife said all he did for that year was read his Bible. Very spiritual person. So he wanted three weeks to pray. He told the doctor, if at the end of the three weeks when I come back to you, the cancer is still there, then we will do the surgery. After three weeks, the cancer was still there. They did the surgery, but after a few months, my friend passed. My friend in his faith was looking for a spectacular, miraculous something from God. And it was God's plan to deliver him, but not to deliver him in the way he wanted. It wasn't going to be a Benin kind of thing. Do you understand what I mean when I say a Benin kind of thing? In the same way, Jesus said to the Lord, if it is your will, take this cup from me. But then he said, not my will, but thine be done. We have to recognize that as children of God, who claim God's protection, God's protection and deliverance will be there for us, but it may not be in the time we want it, in the way we would like it to happen. Our Lord Jesus suffered on the cross, he died, and then there was the glory of the resurrection. What is required is our trust in God, rather than seeking to put God's protection over us to the test. So my brothers and sisters, as we look at these temptations, and as we seek to identify each of us, as each of us seeks to identify as a child of God, let us remember not only to be focused on the materialistic, yes, it's a part of life, but let us ensure that we focus on that which is spiritual. Let us not seek to be powerful as we seek to serve. And in times of trouble and difficulty and suffering, let us be able to say, Thy will be done. Let us put our trust in the Lord. Note that at the cross, the centurion said of Jesus, Truly, truly, this man was God's son. May the same be said of us. And one final note. Let us know that in, in facing the temptation successfully, Jesus responded to each temptation with the word of God. And we must therefore always make time to read and to study the word of God to let it speak to us. Because these three temptations were not the only temptations which came to Jesus. These were just some. And these may not even be the temptations that will come to us. I could, we could just imagine the very nature of the temptations which may come to us. Let us look to the Word of God in order that we may be led, in order that we may be strengthened, in order that we may experience.
experience the deliverance of God. May we each and everyone be able to say, I am a child of God. Why not turn to somebody near you and say, you are a child of God. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord God, for your protection. Thank you, Lord God, for your, the cover of your wings over our nation, over our homes, over the entire world. We claim it, we consider it received, and we thank you for it. All in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The hymn you have an insert, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Please remain seated. <laughs>
Sharpen his proclamation of the word so that your people learn to reject voices of deception and distraction. Strengthen all who are tempted to believe lies about themselves or others. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for the earth and all its creatures. Protect wilderness places and all plant and animal species that call them home. Sustain farmers and all laborers who work in land and harvest the fruits of its abundance. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for the nations of the world. Awaken elected leaders and government officials to the needs of those who are oppressed and grant them compassion to deal mercifully with immigrants and refugees who reside among us. We pray especially for those fleeing the war in, the, in Ukraine. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for those in need, rescue those experiencing mental illness or contending with addiction, ease the anxiety of those who live with dementia, Command your angels concerning all those who are sick, especially Madeline Yeager, Jennifer Sweeney, Phyllis Hess, Janet, Mike Wilson's mother, Paul Sojewski, Sandra Sintron, Linda Patton, Marilda Poner's daughter, Melva Beckler, Jim Chaney, Reverend Sober's wife, Reverend Allen's wife, Thelma Lamond, Jim Merle and the Will and the Willard family. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for this assembly. Bless those who take bread and prepare the table for our communion celebration. Accompany those who share the bounty of this meal with those who are homebound or hospitalized. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We give thanks to those who harvest to those who have died, gather them with all the saints into your heavenly dwelling place. Encourage us with the promise that all who call your name are saved. Merciful God, receive our prayer. prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord of our God. It is right to give our thanks to grace. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that, renewing, renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host in heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of heaven and earth, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You may be seated. If you haven't collected the communion elements, please do so. And now we come to the Lord's table. I apologize for making you sit when you should be standing. My apologies. <laughs> In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. 
the body of Christ given for you. Amen. Amen. Again, after supper, he took a cup, gave thanks, saying, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. The blood of Christ shed for you. you and keep you the Lord the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace Amen. Amen. the hymn number six six zero lift high the cross 